All right, hello and welcome. So table view seems to be a popular subject and I've had people ask me to do some tutorials in English so I started with the hello world one and now we're gonna go ahead and show you guys how to implement a very simple table view and I'm using Xcode 4.2 and well let's get our hands on it hope it helps. So we're gonna go ahead and open Xcode. And in Xcode, we're gonna start a new project. And we're just, uh, it's gonna be a single view application. And we're just gonna go ahead and call it Table Views. It asks us where we're gonna save it. Uh, I already had one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. This, sh this shouldn't uh, appear to you guys. And. So we've got our project and we're going to go to our main storyboard dot, dot storyboard and we're going to click on it and we're going to look for an object that's called table view. So here's the table view and we're going to go ahead and drag one on our view controller. And the thing about table views is that, is that it has two things it needs. It needs a data source and it needs a delegate. In this demo, we're only going to work with the data source. So I'm holding down the control key and I'm going to click and drag to the view controller. And then I'm, I'm going to select the data source. So what I'm telling my program is that the data source is going to be in my view controller. And we're going to work on that in a bit. Next thing I'm going to do is not really necessary, but I'm clicking on the cell, on the prototype cell, and I'm going to go ahead and put an identifier my cell. This, if we don't do this, it's gonna give us a warning. Uh, it's not gonna crash our program or anything. I'm just doing it so, it, so that it's absolutely clean, so that it doesn't have any anything. Okay, so that's it over here. And next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on our header file. And let me just hide the util utilities. And actually, I'm gonna go and open my implementation file and then I'm gonna click on this button the assistant editor so that it shows me my header file and my implementation file and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell my view controller that it has to be able to use the methods for the table view so UI table view and since we're gonna work on the, our data source it's gonna be UI table view data source now our table view is going to be populated with the data we ha we take from an array. So I'm going to declare the array here. It's going to be an NS array. And just call it table data. And then I'm going to set the properties. Retain. And I can just copy this and paste it so that it's exactly the same. Now, the next thing we gotta do is we gotta synthesize. Everything we declare here as a property, we gotta declare on our implementation file with at synthesize, and then table data. Now, I like to delete all the code that we're not gonna use so that you guys can understand exactly what we're using and why we're using it. So I'm gonna delete the did receive memory warning. I'm gonna leave the view did load here, and I'm gonna delete everything else except the at end. So first thing we want to do is we, we want to populate our array. So our table data is going to be an NS array, a lock, and then we're going to init with objects. And I'm going to put four objects in my array. So one, two, three, four. And the elements of my array are going to be John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Now, that's all we got to do with our array. So next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and populate our table view. So I'm going to do this. It's actually a great tool, I think. Program mark table view data 
source methods. And I'm going to show you in a bit what that does. Now I'm holding down the command key and I'm going to click on UI table view data source. And this is going to show me all the methods that UI table view data source can implement. So it's defining me that there are a couple of required methods. So I'm going to go, go ahead and just copy them and paste them in here. And we'll just replace this. These two. We can delete the comments. And now I told you I was going to show you what Pragmamark does. If you go here, you can see the parts that your program has. So in the view lifecycle, there's viewed load, which you can see right here, view lifecycle, and the method is viewed load. And in our table view data source methods, which is the name that I gave to this group of methods, you can see the two methods that we're implementing for our table view data source. So it's it's really good so that you can have uh, visually uh, see which methods you're using for which part of your program. Uh, it's not really a, a, a necessary thing to do, but it's it's cool to do it so that you can have a uh, order on what you're implementing. So next thing we're gonna do, I'm holding down the Alt key, and I'm gonna go and drag my mouse over here over this method, and I'm clicking on it. And what I want to show you guys is that the return value expected is the number of rows in a section. Uh, since our table only has one section, it's asking us for the number of rows in our table. So we got a return, and we have four uh, objects on our, on our array. So this is one way we could do it. There's a better way. We can go ahead and put table data count. So if our array ever changes or has more uh, objects or less objects, uh, the program is going to go ahead and reserve that memory for whatever number of, of uh, elements the array has. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, I'm, I'm holding down the Alt key and I'm going over this method. And this guy is asking us to return an object inheriting from UI table view cell that the table can that the table view can use for the specified row. So okay, we're gonna implement a UI table view cell. Let's call this cell and tell it that it's nil. And then we're gonna return it. So we're we're already complying with what this method needs. Uh, so we don't have any warnings or anything. And now we're gonna start working. The way table views work is that all the cells, let me go back to the storyboard, you can see that our, our canvas only has one prototype cell. This cell is going to be replicated over and over uh, with the text or, and the image and uh, whatever elements we're using uh, for a table view. So uh, most people see a table and they think that each cell is a unique uh, element or object, and it's not. It's actually a replication. It's a, it's a it's like cloning them. So what we're gonna do is tell it, tell tell our program that the cell is an object of our table view, table view, that needs to be dequeued reusable cell with identifier. So we're gonna reuse it, we're gonna dequeue it and reuse it over and over as long as our array has elements to populate it. And the identifier is going to be exactly the same that we put in our storyboard. Let me show you guys, which was my cell. We can actually hide the assistant editor in this guy here too. So, at my cell. Now, the next thing we're going to do is called lazy instantiation, uh, which means we're, we're going to initialize our cell at the last moment. So if our cell equals nil, we're going to initialize our cell. Cell equals UI table view cell lock init with style right here. 
Now the style we're gonna use is gonna be UI table view cell style. I'm writing this much because I want to show you guys that we have four styles, which is default, subtitle, value one, and value two. I'm not gonna go into what each of these are. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose default, and the identifier is gonna be the same, which is at my cell. So we did the two things we need to do to, to get things running. Now, how do we actually populate our cell? Now, all the cells have, have several elements, and one of them is a text label. So cell.textlabel, and all text labels have text, so dot text equals, and now we're gonna choose our array, which is table data. Object at index, index path, row. So um, cells are have the same indexation as our array. So the cell with the index zero is gonna be populated with our array's element index zero, which is John. One is Paul, two is George, and three is Ringo. So that's actually everything we we need to do to create and populate our table. So I'm going to go ahead and run the program. And it takes a little while to compile and run. Let's hope it doesn't take that long. Okay. And that's it. We got up a table. We got our four elements. We can choose them. And as you can see, more uh, cells are created to populate the rest of the screen. So if we, if we were to actually show that only the four cells were reserved. We can go ahead and change the our table view style from plain to grouped. And if we if we run our program again, that's it. So this was the first of series of tutorials that talk about table views. In the next one, I'm gonna talk about setting up an interaction with the user so that when the user touches one of the cells he's gonna get an alert telling him uh, you chose George or you chose John or you chose Paul or Ringo so hope it helps uh, if you guys have any questions the easiest way to contact me is my Twitter account which is at uh, Luis Egarza uh, you don't really have to follow me because I tweet mostly in Spanish but there's a link on my Twitter account to my Google Plus uh, account and there, I mostly post in English, and I actually interact with, with plenty of English speakers, so feel free, to, feel free to add me, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask, and hope it helped, and I'll see you guys on the next tutorial. Thank you.